Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out to the Apex Museum tonight. I want to thank the Apex Museum for allowing us to use this space. It is Black History Month, so we did find it fitting to have it here tonight and uh, uh, have a discussion about business. Not necessarily history, but we will be talking about business tonight. Uh, I want to thank our drink sponsor, Rock Drinks, which is one of the best bartenders in the southeast region. That's Florida, Tennessee. Uh, we don't do nothing in Mississippi. Nothing in Mississippi. Okay. <laughs> but Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, he, this, this guy is everywhere, and I, I definitely appreciate him being here tonight. I also want to thank uh, our DJ tonight for coming up and uh, setting up for us and, and providing the audio, Black Crip tonight. Uh, he is in the house, as they say. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, but uh, I definitely want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, I think we got the best uh, people here tonight. So I want to, first of all, introduce our host for tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to have Miss Janice, the gallery coordinator, come up and say a few words about the Apex Museum, please. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you guys for coming out to the Apex Museum. We appreciate you guys. But I just want to tell you guys a little bit about the Apex Museum and how we need your support, right? Um, we are, we've celebrated 40 years, right? And we want to be here 40 more plus years. But we can only do that with you guys' help, right? So anybody that you know, please talk to them about the Apex Museum and ask them have they come and visited the museum. And if they have not, please let them know how much they are missing, right? We're the only black history museum in the city of Atlanta, well, in Georgia, period, right? So we definitely need all support for everyone that you guys know, right? And what I do here is um, I guide people through the museum. If you come for a tour, I will guide you through the museum and give you all the information about the museum, all right? Um, and again, thank you guys so much for coming. And how can we help? You can help by donations, right? We, thank you. We have, uh, like I said, celebrated 40 years, and we're trying to build phase two. And uh, phase two is going to be on this parking lot. Uh, it's, uh, the picture of it is in the, on that hallway down there. So we're going to be big and shiny like the other museums. So I'm sure that's going to bring more people out, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All Wonderful. right. Thank you. <laughs> so I would like to invite our host up for tonight. He is the Director of Entrepreneurship at the Urban League. He has consulted with President Obama as a small business coach. And you got some listen? You know, keep going. I got a little list of stuff here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he is also the host of a national, nationally syndicated uh, radio show called The Cap Builders Talk, and he is my mentor and my business coach, and more importantly, my friend. So I'm, more to, I'm excited to be here again tonight with you. All right. How's everybody doing? You guys have been sitting for a while. I want you to stand up real quick. And just turn to your neighbor and say, how was your day? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know. You know, it, it's, I started that out like that because it's, it's so important when we go out, it's never the quantity, it's the quality of people in the room. And if you start going out places and you don't meet anyone and there are people in the room, whose fault is that? It's your fault. And it's so simple just to turn to somebody and say, hey, how was your day? And a smile. All right. But tonight we're going to be talking about something. Doing, you can sit down now. <laughs> Oh, I got past the plate first. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, you put your donations in. But we're going to be talking about tonight the importance. How many of you are in business? How long have you been in business? Long time. I want to hear how long have some of you have been in business? 15 years. That's right. You're a playwright in there. Dang. Yeah, all right. Anybody else? How long? 1994. Wow. Eight years? What kind of business? Wow. He's trying to take your business, man. I know. I had <laughs> to get in here. You got to go. No. We, we collaborate. We collaborate. We the reason why I asked that question is because you've been in business a long time. There's a very important aspect about business, and that's getting out networking. Okay. You know, I do a lot of business coaching, I do a lot of training. A lot of times I'm working with business owners, and they go, I don't mind doing what I do. I just don't like getting out there, meeting folk, and stuff like that. But you can't do it without it. 
and it's really changed nowadays because we used to do it physically, like, hey, how you doing? But now we get out our phone and go, hey, how you doing? Okay, so you got two fronts that you got to get on and do it, and you got to do it well. So tonight, we had the pleasure, Aniana, <laughs> you know, the few people like that are professionals at this. But we got Corey Moore, come on down. He's professional, he's a pro networker, all right? Uh, he's been, uh, Corey and I have been in the game a long time. And uh, the thing is, is that what, what I admire about him is one of those things about when you get in business, you create a vision for yourself. And he stayed on that path. And like, he just had an event last week. And it was just, what, George Frazier was there. I mean, he had, but it started from a long time ago. We're gonna talk about that tonight. But the real thing we wanna get across tonight is the importance of networking and sometimes some of the there's techniques to it. It's just not, like when I go out, people just think, um, it's not nothing random for me. It's very purposeful. It may look, you know, very relaxed and getting along, but I have a, I'm there on a mission. And tonight we're gonna talk about the importance of networking, not only physically, what uh, Corey does a lot of, but also digitally online. And how do you create a brand for yourself? Because we don't really realize now that you know, people are getting themselves kind of confused, okay? Because they're using social media and um, they're trying to sell their business. Uh, actually, a lot of you are in business, but they're getting their, their message confused. You know, look at my crab legs. <laughs> now hire me for business. You know, I mean, they, they're, they're sending out mixed messages. And the same thing happens when we go to networking events. You can send out a mixed message to your potential customers because your potential customers are everywhere, you know? And a lot of times people feel like, just because she's not my potential customer, her friend might be. So I need to impress her so she can tell her friend about me, all right? So everybody we touch is a potential customer. So we're gonna have a seat here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start out, you know, Corey and I have conversations quite a bit about networking, but. I want him to introduce himself and, and talk a little bit about himself and why he's done what he's doing, and then we're gonna get into it. And this is a discussion too, so if you have a question, you can raise your hand, and we're gonna try to stay on topic. Last week, last month we got off topic. <laughs> but, but this is important because he's a professional at it. These guys are professional at digital marketing, and the whole purpose of this is for you to learn how to do something better. And also, if you're doing something that works for you that maybe doesn't come up, we want you to share that as well. So we together? All right. So Corey, uh, introduce yourself and... How's everyone tonight? Well, maybe this isn't on. How's everyone tonight? Awesome. Wonderful, thank you. So my name is Corey Network King Moore. That's how, King. Network King. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it, it's French. Uh, my company is Pro Networker. We are a resource center for networking or business events. Uh, for people who wanna build their business through face-to-face -face networking, you can't go to an event if you don't know where it is. So what we do is have a list of different events that are happening around Atlanta. Uh, we also produce events as well. Um, how I got into it was I actually um, own an accounting firm as well, so we do taxes for individuals and small businesses. And I grew my accounting firm through networking. I literally went to a networking event, um, and actually somebody had to teach me how to network. They're like, hey, now that you're not in corporate America, you need to get out and network your business. I'm like, what is networking? Hey, come with me. So I got out there, and the whole concept behind running into somebody who you don't know, you tell them what you do, they have a need for it, they give you money. That was awesome to me. That was, I was like, this is amazing. So let me do it again, and the more I did it, the more I met people who needed my service and gave me money. I then said, you know what, I need to start helping other people do this because there was literally a difference between night and day from me networking versus not networking. It wasn't like, oh, you know, it went up a percentage or what point, no, no, no. It was literally a difference between night and day. So again, I became a networking advocate, started letting people know about different networking events that were happening around Atlanta. We then started producing events to where we're at right now. So very, very happy to be here. And again, thanks for having me. Talk about the event. I just want <clears> to <throat> see where he's from. Talk about the event you had last week. Okay. Um, so how I got started was by having little smaller networking events. Um, we'd have, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people come out to the events. Great. 
Um, in my portfolio, we've had events, um, we've had business expos to where we'd have our largest one, we had about 120 exhibitors, about 600 um, attendees, paid attendees. Um, we were probably top five in Atlanta as far as business expos. Um, anybody ever watch Shark Tank? So uh, probably about five years ago, brought in Damon John from sh the show, did an event centered around him. The following year, we brought in um, Kevin Harrington um, from the show as well, did an event centered around him. Um, so we've done some large events. With that, last week, we have a concept called Urban Atlanta for black business owners and black professionals to be able to network with each other to help kind of recycle the dollars in the community. Uh, we did a conference slash expo. So I don't know if you guys know who Dr. George Frazier is, but um, he is to what Les Brown is to the black community as far as um, speaking of motivation speaking. He is the networker in the black community, huge person. Um, so he was actually speaking 70, I want to say 74, extremely passionate, very sharp brother, uh, was at the event. He was our key, keynote speaker. We we're very excited about that. So. That's the event that we had uh, last week. So how many of you get out and network on a regular basis? So what, what do you do when you get out and network? Oh, I'm sorry. What, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> um, well, good evening. My name is Barry Brown. Uh, I'm the student athlete playbook character development specialist for youth. So we work with student athletes around the country, uh, specifically here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we base. Uh, we handle the South Fulton High School. So we're talking about Banneker, Westlake, Langston Hughes, those schools. So that's what we do. We will help student athletes accomplish their goals in the classroom and, of course, in their specific sport. So when I go to networking events, a lot of times I'm going to school-oriented events where parents are. So those, that's, the parents are actually our target market, parents, coaches, athletic directors. So we go to a lot of events where they are. Uh, we go to a lot of sporting events, like right now we have the basketball tournaments going on for the state championships. So we've been to several of those games, uh, tournament games. And so we, we meet people, talk to them, pass out our information. Like this evening, met Ms. Janice, Mr. Parham introduced us. Boom, uh, we're on the verge of already doing business in, what, 10 minutes of coming in the building tonight. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> exactly, Ma. And, uh, <laughs> Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. But I, but I specifically came to meet Kevin. That's why I, I specifically came to meet him. Yes, sir. Good deal. Good deal. So, Corey, you know, when people go out networking, I tell about techniques. You know, why should they network? Let's talk about why they should do it first. You, you were talking about it, it changed your whole profile, but what is the real reason people really need to get out and do that? And what are some of the techniques that they need to do when they're learning it? So raise your hand again, who likes networking? Raise your hand if you like networking. Okay, today is Thursday. Raise your hand if you've been to more than one event this week. Okay, good. You had your hand up before, but this is your first event? What's going on, man? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, social media came about, which is phenomenal. Social media has actually helped people with reach. But what I've seen when it comes to networking is there are a percentage of people who have said, oh, social media can now replace face-to-face -face networking, which what I say is, okay, Let's say that you have a celebrity that you would like to meet. Would you like to meet them on social media? Or would you like to meet them face to face? Oh, face to face. Well, your client would like to meet you face to face as well. So when you start looking at it in terms of that, now it shows that need of why I need to not only have the marketing for the social media, but also make sure that I have that face to face networking because at the end of the day, regardless of how much technology has been created, you can't beat the good old fashioned handshake. You can't. So with that, that's where there's kind of this disconnect there of again, when social media started rising, attendance at events started going down, but the business opportunities are still there. 
So I say this to this, these brothers is that every time when I produce an event, I don't care how many people are there because the people who are there are the ones who are supposed to be there. And these are the ones, regardless of if it's raining outside, like I'm known for having events in the rain. I'm known for that. And I say, look, I'm not made out of sugar. That's why I, I still come to events when it's raining. But, and I'll, I'll end with this, I, I did a speaking event where I was on the panel, or I, I was um, not on the panel, but actually speaking, and there was only four people in the audience. There were supposed to be a hundred and something, four. One of the girls I actually did business with, one of them is a part of my team and was actually on stage speaking last week at the event wow. on the main stage. So it's not about the numbers. It's not about the numbers. It's about the opportunity that's there. So again, when you can get yourself into a face-to-face -face opportunities, you should, because again, once you start to understand the differences between the functionality be of face-to-face -face and the functionality of digital, then you can actually see they're very different, very different. So since we keep bringing up this whole digital thing, they just, they, they over here waiting, go, come on, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, okay. But let's talk about the, the impact of what social media has had on face-to-face -face networking. Uh, I, I do think, you know, there are some people that uh, that may have said, you know, I can replace doing face to face networking with with social media. But that's that's not the intention. Social media is the most powerful thing about social media is number one is being able to connect with people that you might not see on a day to day basis or people. Now I can connect with people in China. I can connect with people in Africa. I can connect with people all over the world, people that I would not normally come in contact with. Uh, and I think that's the biggest power of it, and in, in, in the power of being able to tell that story so people know who you are. And we're able to reach out to people and, and meet people that way. Uh, but it will never, ever replace these face-to-face -face meetings. There's nothing like, you know, being together, being able to share that energy, share that space, and really being able to feel each other. So uh, I think social media, more than anything, it, it just created more of an opportunity for us to get connected and connect with one another, but never uh, with the intention of trying to replace anything. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's about telling that story. And um, for even like a powerful um, platform like LinkedIn, where you can make so many different connections professionally, um, one, the thing about it is about telling a story. I, I think networking is, is great to go out and physically shake hands. I also like to know what, I also like to have, be able to touch you before I even walk in the room. So it's, it's, it's great to have an introduction. The more you can put the content and document what you're doing and put that out there, and the more people can see that, I think it makes these, these networking events even more beneficial because I may not have met you in person, but I've, I've seen you. I've seen what you're doing. And so when you walk in the room, now I have something that we can really talk about because I've, I've, I was touched by something that you did or you produced. So that's the true power of it. So Corey, I'm going to come back to you. We're going to talk about st strategy. Because you just walk in the room and say, "Hey, I'm here." Okay, <laughs> hey everybody. I mean, what's the strategy when I when? And I think sometimes that's what makes people f afraid to go to networking events. They walk in and they're standing there, not really sure what to do. You know, I always I made it a game for myself. I used to carry one business card in with this pocket. I call it. Remember Barney Five on Mayberry? I had my one bullet, but I'd make somebody <laughs> ask me for that one. I give away a lot of other cards, but I wanted I wanted to talk so good that somebody can I have a card from you, you know? But so let's talk about strategy because and we're going to move immediately from physical strategy to digital strategy, okay? Because you got to have a strategy because what is it? It's really marketing, marketing. When you get out there, if you're just out there, you don't know who your target market is, what you're trying to say. You're not going to get what you're trying to fish for. So let's talk about strategy of physical networking. So the first thing is to one, know why you're networking. Why do I want to leave my house and go to this place? What do I want this, this person to know? Um, when you look at the definition of networking, it's exchanging of information between two or more people that have common interest, okay? Nowhere in there does it say sales. So anytime that you go to a networking event and somebody's trying to sell you, they're doing it wrong. So with that, you want to know, okay, if it's exchanging of information, what information do I want this person to have? 
That's the first and foremost. Um, and it needs to be something very specific. Yeah, the easy thing is, yeah, I'm looking for a client. No, you're great. Everybody's doing that. But also, hey, I'm looking for um, a collaborator. I'm looking for possibly a competitor so we can actually do some things together. Whatever it is, like you want to first have that, what am I going in and what information am I going to be giving out? Um, the next thing is to look at the event and make sure that the event, and not as really necessarily your target market is going to be there because at the end of the day, everybody wants their target market to be there. And there's very little events where your quote unquote target market is going to be there. But you want to do make sure that if you have an event for women, that you don't go to an all male event. Not saying that you won't get a client, but at the same time, it might be a little bit harder. So you want to make sure that the type of people that are going to be at that event are the type of people that you is going to be viable for you to network with. How, how do you do that? How do you make sure? Um, a lot of it is either you know doing the research of the event. Um, if you can, some some events they will have reviews on the event. Some of the event will have a description about the event, who's going to be there, stuff like that. Some events have um, who've already signed up for the event, so you can actually start seeing their profiles and things of that nature. Um, but you definitely want to do some research regarding the event first, definitely. Um, the other thing is be prepared when you go to the event. Um, I tell people all of the time, again, have what you're going to say to people, have what you're going to be marketing, blah, blah, blah. But then also have business cards. Got to have business cards when you get to an event. I know we're going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but you want to show that you are prepared for the environment that you're in right so it's one of those to where in preparation comes in one what you're going to say to that person and two, being able to have the materials and things of that nature to be able to exchange with that person for that um, and then other than that definitely get to know the host of the event typically the host is the person who knows everybody at the event and the whole reason why you're going to an event is to meet people you don't know so with that you definitely want to meet the source first. Do that at every event. Meet the host. I'm astounded of how many people don't do that. Meet the host. The host knows the average person can meet 10 to 15 people in a networking night. So if you go to an event that has more than 16 people there, you're not going to hit everybody. And the whole goal is to try to meet as many people as possible. The host typically knows everybody there or has access to everybody there. You want to meet the host so that you say, hey, I'm looking for this. Oh, did you talk to such and such that's way on the other side of the room? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Go talk to specifically them. Yeah, that one's huge. So that's pretty much um, the things you should do before going to an event. Yeah, I, want, I want to add something to that, and then we'll get to the digital. A lot of times, Chamber of Commerce and all these organizations, what I used to do was all of them are membership organizations. So if I planned on going to a Chamber of Commerce event, a week before I would call up the membership chairperson. And I'd, tell, I'd get them to invite me to the event. So there's John Smith or whatever. If the event starts at 5.30, I'm there at 5 o'clock, 5.15, and I ask for John Smith. We've talked on the phones, and now me and John Smith, we best buds. So I'm hanging out with John. John introduced me to everybody, okay? Because that's his job, for one, because he's a membership chairperson, so he wants to share. So, but he's right, you gotta meet the host. But you have to, you have to set that up. You can't let the host come over to you, all right? So we're talking about some physical attributes of uh, networking, but let's talk about digital. And, and real quick, just to piggyback off what he said, it's, it's not about selling. It's about creating a memorable moment with someone. So therefore, when I take your business card, because I don't have one, so when I take your business card and I do that follow-up, you remember who Kevin Pride is. And, that, and that's, that's, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned over the years about networking, because it's like I, I, I meet so many young kids, and it's so funny nowadays to look back, because I used to do the same stuff. So I kind of laugh at them as they run up to me, hey, I'm this, and I do this, and I do that, and I do that, huh, take my business card. I ain't asked you for nothing. <laughs> I, don't even, I didn't even ask your name. But, uh, so that that was one big thing, but 
on the digital side, see the digital side is it's a much different world because we can prospect, we can go fishing, we can go look and, and find our target market online. We can find out well this person does this, they own uh, their CEO of this company, they're a hundred thousand dollars a year, and this is my target market. We have that information at our disposal, so we can use that to find the people that we're looking for, and it's a perfect tool for prospecting. Yeah. How do you find that information? So uh, typically, uh, me personally, and, and more so almost everybody in this room, LinkedIn is the most invaluable source at this point. Uh, it's a professional network. A lot of people love Facebook, we love Instagram, and, and it's great for popularity, it's great for uh, visibility and branding, but if you're really looking for customers, LinkedIn is really where you wanna be. This is where you're gonna find serious business people, you're gonna find your CEOs there, you're gonna find your CMOs, all the people in the corporation that you're really gonna need to be connected to. And the power of LinkedIn, like Brian always says it's that ability to send a message to this person and get connected and start that conversation with this person mm -hmm. and it goes back to what Corey said earlier um, social media is not about selling nobody wants to be sold to so how you use your your social media your digital media is to be a resource to people so by being a resource to people you are able to number one build credibility you can elevate your personal brand and by them interacting with you on these digital platforms then they start to come to you I may not need you right now but you know what I got something from you so now when I do need you I'm going to then call you or message you or DM you and say hey I need your services right now so we have to use that to continue to be a resource to our audience and build that audience you know, from a standpoint of being a resource, about three years ago, I decided I was going to brave into this whole digital media thing. And I started what I thought was going to be a little small podcast, and it's kind of blew up. But the reason why is because I've made it a point to educate people. You know, I write articles. I I don't sell on the internet. I educate. You know, I have people on my show. I write articles. They've been putting my articles in the Atlanta Business Journal. You know, they can do it for you too, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but the fact is, I became a resource. People looked at me when they're looking for something and relationships or knowledge. So I just started putting out there. So when I work with a lot of my clients right now that are trying to build a platform, I say educate. Put information out there where people look forward to. Because you're trying to get them when they're on, the, on their phones, they're flicking, you're trying to get them to click. You're trying to, to see something, so they click, and then they start, and that's how going down the rabbit hole. Once they start going down my rabbit hole, they go deeper and deeper and deeper. When they go to my sites, you know, I have a bunch of different sites, but I'm always trying to provide information because if people feel like they're being sold to, that's a problem. And a lot of times, even when we go out networking events, if somebody's coming up trying to sell something to you, that's a problem. That's a turn off. So I can't let this pass up anymore. I want to get this whole business card situation. <laughs> uh, only reason why is because a lot of times I, I, when I talk to millennials now, and I'm like, here's a card. They're going, I don't have a card. I do this. So I called Corey one day because Kev Kevin and I had a situation where we, I gave him a card. He didn't have one. But I'm, not, I'm, just very, I'm very used to it now. A lot of younger people are not cards. They, 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 they do something with the phones. I feel old now. But, but I don't know what it is. They can do it. They can touch the phones or do something, but I'm still old school. But let's talk about for a minute this whole business card thing. Corey has some good, good comments about that. So I'm not going to pick on Kevin. <laughs> but I want to ask the audience, who here does not have, let's first start, who does not have a business card on them today? Other than you. I know. Okay. Does not have one. Okay. Three, who does not carry one at all? Meaning I didn't run out of, I just ran out of them. But no, like I don't care. I don't believe in business cards. I don't do that. Anymore, I used to. Exactly, anymore. Okay, so you don't, you, okay, you used to have business cards, but you don't anymore. Same way? Okay, but you don't. Wonderful. What's your name? Daphne. Daphne, and what type of business do you have? Really? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> what, 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 what type of events do you produce? Uh, health, care, sound, headphones, a lot of different types of events. Gotcha. All right, Daphne, can I borrow you? Come on up. 
So I'm going to pretend that this chair is a table. Okay. Okay. Let me make sure you do not do business cards anymore. What's the reason? I'm going to be very honest. The reason I don't is because I used to do so much networking that all of my followers and people already kind of find me on social media. And anything I post that I'm doing, they come. So I realized that I'm now in a new city. And I will have to do this again, but right now I just don't. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So I want to show how kind of what we were talking about with social media mm -hmm. and networking, how some people use social media to replace networking, right? So there's people, and you said you, so I'm going to say Daphne, who also has now used social media to replace the business card. This is a table, okay? Let's say that I had a dollar representing the people in the digital world, and I put it on the table. I take another dollar, and this represents the people in the analog world. Okay? The non-digital people. How many dollars do you want? I want both dollars. You want both? You need business cards. You with me? Does that answer any questions on whether we should have? I know, no, we're not talking to you, but does that answer any question on should we have business cards? I got a rebuttal. And now I will say this. And especially for your market, because and this, I'm not going to get on my soul. Thank you. I appreciate you. What happens is people in the digital world, not you, <laughs> but, you but you, they say, oh, I'm digital. Okay. But your client typically is not. Right? So you have to appeal to them the analog person you you like you really want an analog person so that they be like look here's my money <laughs> you go do it I will never do it myself versus that person who's like yeah I'm savvy I might use you for a little bit but then once I start going then there's no reason to use you because I can do it myself anytime that you have a digital world and an analog world and if you choose between the two you are literally leaving money on the table. Does that make sense? So with that, it's one of those. Now, there are people who say, no, I only want $1. And there are business models to where they don't want everybody, which if that is your business model, then do that. There are some people who's like, look, I only work on referrals. If you weren't referred to me, we're not doing business. I don't advertise, whatever, great. But if you're not at that point in your business and you want both dollars, you gotta have something that's for both people. Make sense? Awesome. Rebuttal. All right. <laughs> okay. Do I need to stand up? Hold on. You can if you want. You just, you need to Let me pull out my phone. <laughs> no. It's, 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 it's really a completely different story for me. It, it, it's not that I think that digital is better. It's not. Uh, I've been doing this a while now. I've been out here a, a business owner for about 10 years, and I started out, you know, young, going to networking events all the time. You know, huh, get my car, huh, get my car, huh, get my car, get my car. And no one ever called me back. Like, seriously, I was putting out cards left and right, and I might get 5% of those people to call me back. Now, it could have just been I wasn't creating memorable moments. It could have been I was selling too much when I should have just been, you know, talking and adding value to the conversation. But what I found was, like, for instance, I just came back from Phoenix at uh, Green Biz. Uh, CEOs, everybody. I probably got over 200 business cards. And what I did at night, instead of going to the parties, drinking and all this type of stuff, I got on my phone. I got on my laptop, I sent out e emails, hi, this is Kevin, it was so great to meet you. I got on my phone, I started texting everybody that had a cell phone number. And I can show you 
the amount of text messages that I have gotten back. Like seriously, I've gotten almost a response from everybody that I talked to. And that was my reason more so than anything. Let me get your information so I can follow up with you. Now I'm in control of this relationship. And most importantly, I'm in your phone. Something that you're gonna look at every single day. It's not that you're wrong, I'm right. It's just a tactic. Right. Oh, yeah. and, and it's not that we're trying to replace uh, business cards or anything like that with digital. It's just a simple fact I found it's much more effective for me to get your information and let me be in control of this relationship and let me do the follow-up. Now I get in contact with everybody. Hey y'all. Um, no. <laughs> My 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 business closed at six o'clock at night every day, man. No more selling. No. Uh, uh, my name is Reginald Smith. I'm, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. So if I sound southern, right. it's because I'm I am. I'm from Alabama. <sighs> it just got sweeter. All right. Uh, I've been here for about a year. I've owned a social media advertising company with a business partner that is in Beaufort, Georgia, and a business consulting firm since I was 19 years old. I just turned 28 this year. So. Uh, a lot of trial and error, uh, but at the same token, the digital space is what I thrive in. Um, pretty much for me, it's always been adaptation, more as it is just trying to cater to one bunch of people. Uh, again, like I said, I come from Birmingham, I was raised old school, so there's always going to be a time for a business card because that type of customer that I'm looking to do business with in that specific lane has a different bandwidth. So I need to cater to that by adapting. But at the same token, there is still some other way for me to go ahead and take that same analog perspective that typically outside of our generation, for example, has a lot more savvy to do business a lot longer. And then I can keep them doing more business a lot stronger on the back end from a digital aspect. Uh, so for me, it's just, you know, don't try to be just yourself. Be, be the best you for uh, as much as people would allow you to be, uh, as much as you can. So um, that's just how I do it. And for me, uh, uh, it's never a dull moment either way. So good. Yeah. Yep, yep. You know what? Both of them said something that, regardless of if you're doing physical or digital, what do you do after the event? Okay. So it doesn't matter if you got a business card or they gave you a card or whatever. So Corey, I want you to talk about, we were at the event, I got a bunch of cards. What happens after the event? So, and also to clarify, <laughs> going back to this, do both, like you talked about adapt adaptation. If you are in the digital space, then you definitely want to make sure that they have your digital stuff. But I would also, and, I, and I'm so big on, and, and this is why I want to hit the, bring this home, the average person, if they like something, they will touch it. If you don't like something or you think something is dirty, you're typically not going to touch it. To actually have somebody touch something of yours is something psychological that's going into where they're, they're slowly accepting your business. You see what I'm saying? So even if it's, Hey, here's my card, but then, hey, let me shoot you my digital. Let me get yours. Let me put your digital. It's still both. Like, both work. You see what I'm saying? But there's something psych psychological about physically putting a piece of your business in their hand so that they can touch it and feel it and then start to accept it. So that's why I say definitely well, please, because what you did as far as shooting text messages to people after the event, and we're going to talk about that now, is huge. And that's based on the follow-up. And you can do that. That's digital. But having also combined with that physical piece, I think would be beneficial for certain businesses. If it works for you. If it doesn't, great. But to answer your question, follow-up. Follow what happens after the event? So after the event, and that's where you have either, you know, these uh, numbers in your phone or you have these business cards. You got to do something with them. I love competition. And for me, I'm competitive. And what I love, of, and, and I'm an accountant, so I love numbers, right? The fortune is in the follow-up. The fortune's in the follow-up. We've all heard it. But 
Does anybody know how many, what's the average number of touches? 17. He read ahead. <laughs> so don't answer. The average number of touches that you have to touch somebody before they buy. Up, yeah, 7 to 14 plus touches. Do you know what the average person, or you probably know this too, what the, the average number of per, that a, the average person touches right now, currently? They typically do between one and two. So in my head, I'm like, wow. If the average person is doing one and two, but the average person buys seven to 14 plus, I'm not really competing against somebody else if they're not already doing it. Oh, the, the playing field is super open. So I just got to now put systems in place to get these touches in. And that's where the social media comes in. Social media is a little bit different than um, email follow-up. Yeah, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, people don't read emails. That's actually not true. Because what ends up happening is when you have social media, that's definitely a way to be able to touch people but the only delivery system to actually go specifically to them versus something that's, let's call it on the wall, to where they have to scroll to see. This is something that's actually being delivered to them. So for me, I use a lot of, whether it's email marketing or text messages, something that goes directly to that person. So even with an email, even if they have to delete it, guess what, they still saw that name. <laughs> Even if they had to delete it, they still saw that name. So they're having them repeatedly over there. So that fortune's in the follow-up of being able to put those contacts in some type of CRM system. CRM, what does it stand for? Customer, uh, relationship, management. Customer relationship, re relationship management system, putting them in some type of CRM. And now sending out this monthly newsletter, weekly newsletter, whatever your newsletter is, whatever the, the follow-up, but that's that system to do it over time. That is perfect example. The bartender, Rock. I don't know if that's your name, but that's what was on the logo, so that's what I remember, right? The average person when was the last time you used a bartender? Exactly. But have you ever planned a, a party? Did you use a bartender? How about that? Okay. Right, right. So if you planned a party before, more than likely you're going to plan another one. Do you know, do you know of, a de uh, of, a, of a bartender right now that you would call? Okay, you have one. Okay, what typically happens is the average person typically doesn't know one, and if they know one, they know one. And it might be a cousin, a friend, it's a friend, yeah. <laughs> but what happens is yeah, if, right, right, right. <laughs> but if, if, if I go to an event, I meet a bartender, right? And I typically don't use a bartender, but when that situation happens, three years from now, and somebody's like, oh, we're about to throw a party. Do you have a bartender? I'm not going to remember who I met three years ago unless the bartender did something to remind me about his business every month for the last three years. And how that could be is, I'm about to give you this one. If you sent out an email once a month that had um, the drink of the month, and you had a category for rum, you had a category for vodka, you had a category for tequila, you had a category for gin. What ends up happening is whoever opens it, one of those liquors is their liquor. So they're gonna be like, oh, this is great. Next month, you do the same thing. Next month, you do the same thing. What's gonna end up happening is it's gonna get to the point to where people are gonna expect to get your email. What they're also going to do is forward your email. Oh, my girl loves vodka. Oh, she lo let me forward this over to her. So what happens is now when somebody says, and, and here's, what's, here's what's important, 
in the uh, from, it needs to be rock the bartender. Rock the bartender. Rock the bar. What happens is, you ever hear about water as it drips on something? And if it drips long enough, what does it do? It carves, it makes an indention. You literally need to make an indention in people's head regarding you. And this stuff, this is what slow drip campaigns are. And if you do that, what ends up happening is as soon as somebody says bartender, it would be engraved in her head, rock drink. Oh, call rock. They'd be like, who's that? I don't know. I don't know. This guy that sends me these emails. Let me go back to my email. Oh, yeah, it's here. Great. That's how you get calls. And that's where the follow-up is so important. And here's the beauty that if you're not doing it nine times out of ten, your competitor is doing it. And this is why the phone might not be ringing as much. I know that was kind of long, but. No, it's all right. You, you stole my stuff, but it's all right. Because <laughs> we, we, we definitely teach about the email marketing. But on the social media side of things, and, and, and what I heard, and, and the most important thing he said is, is providing something of value. Value. When we are able to provide something of value to people, that is what people remember. Even whether they like it, whether they share it, whether they comment on it, when they see something of value, something that I feel like, wow, that was beneficial to me, whether they like it or not, that is how we start to get ourselves ingrained in people's psychology. And like he said, it's not so much even uh, someone opening up your email, it's the fact you see me in your inbox every time. You're going to continue to see Influencer 365 all the time digital marketing digital marketing digital marketing and no you might not need a digital marketer every single day you do trust me <laughs> they do don't they <laughs> but you might not need us every single day but the key is to be in your mind when the need does arise and social media is powerful for that and and the email follow-up i mean yeah i agree with everything i mean, it's, I, mean I know you're trying to let me in but no but it's, it, it really is about being a resource and it's about engaging with people on multiple levels uh, so that if they see you, if they see you enough time in their inbox or on their timelines, when they see you in person, it makes a greater impact. It's about when you walk into the room, under, people understanding who you are, what you do, um, when you get there. So continue to be a resource, engage people, and you'll have success. Now I want to say something about Rock here. You know, he does more than bartend because I started following him. He goes to the events. He's also videoing. <laughs> I mean, so if you have an event, he's actually showing your event online on his feed. And I was like, that's not <laughs> I mean, so he's doing more than just doing the drink stuff. He has a great camera set up. And that's where we have what we call the secret sauce. What's different about him being a bartender versus somebody else who's just sitting back making drinks? He moves around the room. So if you have him do your event, you're going to see your event online. So I want to applaud you. I, you know, I've been wanting to tell you that, but I've been following you online. Now, I myself, because of my, my radio show, I send out like five to 6,000 emails every Monday, okay? And for a while there, I was sending them out a lot of times during the week until I was speaking somewhere, and a young lady said, I get your stuff. And I said, whoa, she's calling this stuff. I need to back up a little bit, <laughs> okay? Because what started happening, because if you're using the right tools, I could tell my open rate started going down, okay? But now it, it stays pretty level because I send out, and what I've done on occasion, because I send out the same time every Monday, I won't send something out. Then I start getting texts. Are you doing your show tonight? I said, oh, so y'all watch it, <laughs> okay? But the whole deal is really follow up. And Kevin, I want to ask you a question. You sent out the texts to people. What kind of responses were they sending back? You said you were getting all these texts back. What, what were they saying on the texts? What did you say to them, and what are they saying back to you? I was just kind of curious about that. Let's find out. Um, this is, who is this? Warren Gorowitz. And uh, basically what I, what I normally do is I try to always – uh, I always try to send some type of message. Number one, great to meet you, Kevin Pride, uh, Influencer 365, Atlanta Business Journal. And then I also try to put something in there that reminds them of the conversation that we may have had. And most of the time, when you are able to do that, typically, then they, the response will come out, oh, that was so great to meet you. And uh, his response to me was, thank you, Kevin, great to meet you as well. But now I'm in his phone. So next week when I start to, when I start to uh, contact him, he's going to see Kevin Pride is contacting him. And he's going to remember, oh, I met him at Greenbiz. And that's, and that's the whole key to it. Okay. 
one quick, I know we got to wrap up here, but you have to do something. You know, it may sound repetitive, but you tell the same story. You want to, you want to know what you talked about. The only way you can know what you're talking about is by talking about the same thing. So that's your pitch. Whatever it is that you do, that you practice, when you talk about your business, you talk about yourself, you say the same kind of story. You may smooth it around a little bit. And then just to add to that real quickly, uh, another big thing that I do, especially when I know I'm going to networking events, I'll set aside, I'll make me a little note. I'll say, uh, great to meet you. This is Kevin Pride, Influencer 365, Atlanta Business Journal, and something that I know I was going to say anyway. And then I can just copy and paste that quickly into a text message. And nine times out of ten, I can do it just right there on the spot, and we're already starting to exchange. Hey, lock me in. Let's stay connected. Messages like that, a lot of times it, st it starts to help to build that relationship. You know, uh, I have, like, I have this Android here, and there's a feature on the phone called Quick Response. So I have a lot of pre-crafted text messages already in my phone, okay? Like when I, if you've been on my show, you get a text from me right after, hey, great job on the show, you can go right here. But I have it all already in, so when I meet people, I just go, <laughs> you know, oh, damn, oh, man. But I, I send it out. <laughs> I did, I did, went like this. But I have pre-crafted, like even how to meet with me. You know, I, I, I created a site called Meet with Mark, spelled with a C dot com. They go and they can look at my schedule. So if I meet someone, I, as soon as I get their number, I can text them really quick. Hey, if you I'd love to get with you, why don't you go to Meet with Mark, spelled with a C. So I have it already in there, pre-crafted texts, because I found this true. The quicker you text somebody, they respond to text. Okay? So we've been talking. I want you to, if there are any questions you have of Corey or digital marketing or anybody have any comments or... Go ahead. There you go. I have a few questions. Suppose you meet someone, you don't have a business card, and they don't have a business card. What do you do at that point? That may be for Kevin. But. <laughs> right. Um. What I used to do is have um, some post-its and a pen. So somebody would say, hey, I don't have a card. Oh, it's cool, I got it. Here, I'll write it down. And I had it. Now with the digital world, you don't really necessarily have to do that if you don't have a card. If they don't have a card, then you could find them on um, LinkedIn. You say, hey, let's connect on LinkedIn real quick. Or hey, um, let me shoot this, this message to you, or whatever the case is. And I want to shine on one thing that Kevin does. When you go to an event and there's more than 10 people there and you meet more than 10 people, you gotta keep imagining everybody's used to doing the same thing. That little tip that he gave about shooting that message, the text message, the average person's not doing. That's huge when it comes to the follow-up. So now that person's like, oh wow, I got a text message. And more than likely, they didn't get no other text messages from anybody else. So you're what I like to call that red dot and all the black dots to where that eye is going to go to that red dot. You're now making that that person visible. Does that make sense? So definitely great um, tip. And then uh, one more thing, uh, just real quick. How many folks got their phone? Exactly. <laughs> so that's 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 the key in the world that we live in nowadays. You're not leaving home without that phone. Everybody. I've driven back 10 minutes to go back and get my phone. So, you know, even if we don't have our business cards, it's, hey, let me get your number, let me put it in my phone. And another quick tip that I have learned, though, uh, use a note. Don't, don't just put contacts in your phone because a lot of times we go to these networking events. What I'll normally do is I'll start a note, I'll put the name of the networking event, and then I'll start putting names and numbers there. So therefore, I know this is where I met this person and this is who this person is because I've got thousands of contacts in my phone. And then if I don't necessarily just remember, hey, I gotta talk to this person, then a lot of times that person just gets lost amongst all these other contacts. So make sure that you keep an extra note to the side that therefore you can keep track of all these people that you're meeting at these events. Um, and just a quick tip, um, if you have an Apple device, Apple gives you an opportunity to m build your card. You can just go in there and make your card. You could put your, you could put your picture, you could put all your information there, all your business information. Oh, no, she did. 
on Apple devices. <laughs> Sponsored by Apple. Sponsored by Apple. <laughs> yes, and then all you do is share. You open that, touch that car, go that, scroll down to the bottom and hit share contact. Put their information in. Again, put that note as far as like who they are and where you met them, and then send that text to them. And now you're in their phone, and, and they're in your phone. I write on there where I met them, the day I met them, and if we say anything, you know, at the meeting, I write it on the back of the card. I mean, that card be filled up. <laughs> but when I get home, what I do is I send them an email, I tell them who I am, what I'm doing, and then I reference what we talked about. So they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember you. So I, I do love doing that. And one more thing I want to bring up is this thing right here. Okay, talk about that 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 thing right there. So um, there's a young lady by the name of Bonnie Ross Parker. I don't know if any of the um, women know who she is, but she is a hu huge networker. Had a business called Joy of Connecting, which turned to Experience Connection. But it's kind of my networking wife. Um, she got on me about having a name tag. And I did so much networking and never had a name tag. And I, and it was just lazy, just didn't get one. Until I got a, I had one of my shirts, had the sticky on it, took it off, and some of the sticky residue stayed on the shirt. And I went, took it to the dry cleaner, they couldn't get it out. Man, cost me that shirt. <laughs> Let me go and get this $15 name tag. And ever since then, have it on there. So now it's one of those to where, you know, the name tags, they fall off, whatever the case is. I mean, just it's just more of a professional look. Um, doesn't cost a lot at all. So I highly suggest everybody get one if, if, you, if you network often, so. And, and the reason why it's important is because if you don't know Corey, you can walk up to him and go, Corey, how you doing? It's almost like you do know him because you can see his name. That's why when you go to networking events, some people, I don't need no name tag. That means you don't want to meet anybody. Because strangers, it's difficult for a stranger just to approach you unless they're professional at networking and say, hi, my name is Mark, what's yours? But if you have your name, oh, hi, Sheila, or hi, Mary. So that name tag becomes important, you know. So, you know, it has this logo on it, shows what it is. So that's just, you know, something else you want to think about with networking. Um, what time is it? Is that time? Did you guys have a good time? Yeah. All right. Do you get some good information? Yeah. All right. I want to thank everyone for coming out. First of all, I, I, I got to introduce real quick Laser Focus Media. And I'm so sorry. I, I apologize, sir. Please, uh, Nigel and Brian, this is Laser Focus Media. These are our media partners. Uh, everything that we do, they're there for us. Uh, they are one of the best videography teams in the city. Trust me, probably all in this, is the state, y'all the best in the state? All right, there you go, see? But they are one of the best videography teams and they're gonna be doing your videos. So, <laughs> this is Sheila Bronner right here. But uh, we try to respect people's time. Uh, we, we set an hour, we start at 7.30, we end at 8.30. So I wanna thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, I know it, it's, it's, it's been a great time for me. I hope you guys had a great time. I know the Apex Museums appreciate you guys coming out and being a part. If you can, please donate so we can build a, a much bigger museum. And thank you all so much.